Hi guys, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm Michael and I'm the woodworker for MK Designs. Um, yes, I'm back in my office this week. Uh, the reason being is because as I was putting this video together and editing it and whatnot, I realized that I didn't create an intro video and it's raining outside today. So I'm in here in my pajamas recording the intro. So in this video, we're going to take over from where we left off last week and get the sides and the top part of it done um, and then we'll finish it up from there we'll get the wheels on it today also and we'll, then we'll finish it up in next week's video a couple of things before we get to the build and that is first of all we finally have a website yay <laughs> um, it's mkdesignscolorado.com and it I, go there and check it out and don't worry there's going to be a lot more stuff on it I just recently started getting it put up I've only got a few of our products on it at the moment but there's going to be more coming secondly um, we finally have a logo also uh, I found a GF expert underscore Ursa from Pakistan on Fiverr and it didn't cost very much and she did a great job on it I, I'm pretty sure it's a she um, and yeah, she did a great job on it, and we couldn't be happier. We finally have a logo. Uh, so yeah, uh, well, oh yeah, and the other thing is, um, just so you guys know, I am slowly upgrading my video equipment. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my birthday was this past Wednesday, and my boys, um, they somewhat kind of are trying to encourage me in this in the videos they seem to be kind of excited about it um and they they saw they knew that i only had my little laptop right now and with a 15 inch monitor and with um the video editing software and whatnot a bigger monitor is usually better so they for my birthday they went out and bought me a 28 inch monitor this thing is massive you see it right there <laughs> compared to what i'm used to the other good thing about having the bigger monitor is I've also started using Fusion 360. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's a 3D modeling software and it's allowing me to actually create designs. And having the bigger monitor for that obviously helps. And um, the, the good news for you guys on that is I'm finally going to be able to start um, putting my designs out there. I'm going to be offering some for free, some for sale. And so yeah, start looking for those too because they're coming. And so, yeah, uh, that's about it for right now. Um, so let's get to it. Okay, so this is where I got yesterday. Uh, I added that little piece right there on the side and the shelf and whatnot. And um, I had to stop early yesterday because I was getting frustrated because you ever have one of those days where you get in the shop and you just can't find anything? Well, that was yesterday. So I decided to stop and I'm going to go back at it today. So I'm going to finish getting set up and we'll see where we get today. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I'm going to run a piece across here. It's going to give it a little bit more support, but that's not really what I'm going for. The wheels tend to pull out whenever you glue them into or screw them into just in, in grain. So I'm adding this piece just to give it a little bit more stability for the wheels. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just marking out for where my holes are going to go and where it's going to attach and then I'll get the board cut. So here I'm gonna get it cut to rough size and then I'll plane it and join it and cut it down to final dimensions. Okay, so what I should have said was I'm going to join it, then plane it, then cut it down to final size. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to join it. Uh, I'm running across the joiner a couple times on the face, and then I'll run it on the edge, and then I'll run it through the planer. Now, I don't have the planer footage because I didn't realize that where I set the camera at, I was blocking it the whole time that I was using the planer. So I'll get that in another video. I apologize. But I'm just going to run it across the joiner a few times, then run it through the planer, and then I'll cut it to final dimensions on the table saw. Okay, 
Now I'm going to go ahead and drill my pilot holes and then get everything attached. So just like everything else on this video that I've attached, I'm using glue and the screws. And I'm putting glue on both surfaces and attaching it with screws. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure for bracing just to give it a little bit more support from the top to help hold the weight. This is a 150 quart cooler that I'm putting in here. I know I said last week that it was I believe 50 or 55 but no I went and I looked it's actually 150 quarts. The thing can get pretty heavy so I'm just giving it a little bit extra bracing just to help with that. And now that all that's attached, now it's just time to drill pilot holes for the, for the screws for the wheels and attach the wheels. Alright, so I got that. And now I'm going to get started on the top. And what I did was I made this template that fits perfectly around the edges here. And what I'm using for my top and my sides are these cedar fence pickets, these dog ear things. Uh, I'm going to cut off the dog ear and cut these down to size. Okay, so I measured it out and I'm getting these cut down to size to allow for a half inch overhang. So now I'm going to get them in place where I need them and then lay my template on top and get it marked out and then cut that out on the bandsaw. Okay, so once again, I was completely blocking the camera on the bandsaw, but basically what I did was I cut on the, along the line as close as I could without going over and then I'm bringing it over to my oscillating spindle sander and sanding down to the line with it. Okay, so I have a little bit of a conundrum here. The cedar planks that I'm wanting to use for the top and the sides, they're five and a half inches wide and I don't think I can get a second one over here uh, let me grab this one. So yeah, you see it's going to leave a little bit of an area. So I have, an, I have a choice here. I can either keep them full size and connect them and just put a little piece over here because I want it to stick over about half an inch. Or I can trim them all down to where they're equal size and it looks a little more even. I think I'm going to go that route. And then over on this side, I don't have the extra shelf space, so I'll just take this one, measure it here, and measure about half an inch off of it, and cut that off, and that'll give me that piece. So the first thing to do is to get them cut down to length, again, accounting for a half inch overhang on both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to get ready to rip them, and as you can see, they have a little bit of a cup in them. Some of them do anyway. And I want to make sure that that cup is down on, on the table saw, you know, basically frowning face. And the reason for that is to a little bit more stability since I'm not joining them. And also, don't forget safety glasses and a dust mask. So once I have pieces cut, I'm going to 
temporarily put them in place so that I can measure out where I need to for the side pieces and when I go to put the side pieces on they'll be there the reason I'm doing it this way on this side first is because I, I will need to put my plumbing in for my drain before I completely put the side completely on and in order to do that it helps to have that little bit extra space so once I get a few pieces on I can then take the top off and it'll allow me to reach in there to set up my plumbing and whatnot without having to flip the whole thing upside down. So I'm going to cut the pieces from my sides to, to length and then I'm going to do like I did before. I'm going to take the measurement divided by the number of pieces that I'm going to be putting on there and that will give me the width of my pieces. Now the only difference is, is instead of just cutting all the pieces to the same width, I'm going to hold off on the last piece and I'm going to actually cut it to size. So the first thing I'm going to do before I rip them to width is I'm going to cut off one edge just so I have two square edges to glue everything together on. So I'm going to take the first edge and use it as reference on my fence to cut everything down to width. So now that I have everything cut, I'm going to use, start putting it all together using glue and one inch and a quarter brad nails. Now this is what I was talking about, about cutting it to size. I'm going to put the piece on here, mark it, and then cut it. This way helps ensure that it will fit the way you actually want it to. Just like that. Now I went ahead and drilled the hole and ran all the plumbing uh, off camera because I, I couldn't really get the camera in there to be able to show it to you right. So once I got all that done, then I can go ahead and put my glue my pieces on with again using glue and inch and a quarter brad nails, and then I'll cut the pieces to go on the front and the back, and I'll get those put on, and then we'll start on the sides. So I made a little mistake, but I wanted to show you guys because one thing that a lot of people don't seem to realize is that even master craftsmen make mistakes. What separates a poor woodworker from a good woodworker and master craftsman from a novice is how well you fix your mistakes. A lot of times you make a mistake and you can figure out a way to actually make it better. So let me show you what I did. So as you can see what happened is I started to rip this board a little too short and luckily I caught it when I did but one of the pieces I cut off from before fit in there almost perfectly. So I went ahead and pushed it in, put a little bit of glue in there and then pushed it all the way in and then I can go and get it attached and I can cut it off with plus trim saw. And now it's time to start doing the sides. I'm doing them the same way I did the first end. And I measured and cut everything down to size, ripped everything down to size, all except for the very middle board. And I'm putting it on with glue and quarter inch and a quarter brad nails. 
and then I'll do the same thing as I did before. I'll take the middle piece and I'll hold it up there and I'll measure it and then I'll cut it to size to fit perfectly. Now I wanted to slow things down here for just a minute to show you what I had to do on this this end. Um, I, we're wanting rope to be able to pull it around, so I got this sisal rope, and the way I'm putting it on is I drilled two holes into these two pieces that I'm getting ready to put on now, and ran the rope through it and tied it. Now I had to do this before I glued these on because, as you can see, there's not very much space in there. And even if I flipped it over with the cooler in there, because it's not coming out at this point, I would not have enough room to get my hands in there to be able to tie the knots in the ropes. You can see I got the knots tied. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the one up there and I'm going to nail it. And then I'll put the other one up and, and nail it down with the ropes already attached. And then, of course, after this, I'll do the same as I did before. Measure the middle piece, cut it, and put it on. So that's where I'm going to call it a day at today. Um, as you can see, I'm starting to fight the wind and it's supposed to be high winds again the rest of this week. So I got to get all this taken down before it gets here and tries to blow it away. So um, next time um, we'll put the lid on and all the hardware and we'll finish this thing up. So happy creating. One of the perks of living on the west side of Colorado Springs we get these guys in the yard all the time. Yeah, they eat the plants and the trees and you know those fruit trees that are on the hill there. Yeah, so it's really a pleasure. <laughs>